Omo Nigeria lo ni lo wa ja ofo pe la fi la fo go fun o fa sha ti se to fi fun wa so asha ti se a ma ni se pelu iwa a ma ni se pelu esin a ma ni se pelu oriki ta won loyin bo n pe mi poetry ori si ri si asha leledun ma re fi fun gbogbo omo Nigeria pata pata ni gbogbo ipe ku omo yoruba pata pata na la tin gbe sha laruge be lati lu eko bi eko ayo mi sole gbelegbe eko ni le owo eko ni le eja aro dede mama ja gbe tu olomi akere se ohun na lo se de lu ife ni bi ti gbogbo omo yoruba ti se wa pata pata mo wa be gbogbo omo nigeria ni le loko leyin odi agbajo wo la fi soya ajeje owo ko gberu dori e je ka powo po ka gbe laruge adu se bi ohun tele duwa ba lowo si osi gbogbo ohun tele duwa ba lowo si niju ni se e ba je ka powo po ka gbe laruge Here we are, our circle of poets, or should I say triangle? <laughs> um, it's it's quite nice to be here, actually, in the midst of of people who are actively pursuing their love for poetry in our home country. <laughs> First of all, um, I wanted to find out a little bit more about each of us, what we do, what inspired us. Um, we'll start with. Um, <clears throat> the master <laughs> on my right. <laughs> when I started writing poetry, my uncle believed it was the wrongest thing in the world to do. Mm. And uh, let me start by saying I have to blame him for making him, me a poet. Because he brought his books home while he was going to Germany to study. I simply got lost in his library. Thereafter, if I did nothing else in the world, I knew I was going to be a writer. Pigeon Soup, after Frank Aigimokwede. Make I talk, make una hear. See pigeon stew, they sweet, pass all them hot grammar. If it hold big man belly, make and laugh like choke, till you take in trust and come out. If it make better woman self, to like to repass wallet, she go fall for ground to jolly, laugh like home win lotto, ah pigeon are like fruit, you put them for your mouth, sweet like waiting call, just they sing they go. Pigeon sweet, pass grammar, not for talk, I tell you. Concobility day, in waterproof day, can't pay. You know they wet, you know they sweat. Rain no fish spoil them. When country hard like stone, and life chooks off her head like bunga fish for throat, sweet like waiting call. Take and blow, they go. I tell you, say, better day for pigeon or cross hoop. When condition get K leg, or to rip past war, when hungry catch beauty, and where that catch been to, he go forget grammar. Talk waiting, catch them inside. Now pigeon feet and pass. Sweet like black soup and better pan the yam. Take and make drumstick. Put them for your mouth. Kick your life, they go. Very early in my life, about the age of 17, 18, I started writing publishable poetry. One that we are publishing in Okike, Nigeria Magazine, and places like that. But it was in the university that it came together. After I won the University Prize for Poetry, although I was a student of political science, it was clear to me that the road was open. Mm. But when I left the university, it became the case that I, I, I was being invited to perform in London, in places like Venezuela. I went to Medellin later on. And seeing large crowds being sucked into that culture of poetry reading made me see that it was possible frankly, to end a living just doing that. Me, I sabi and well, well. Why grandma know they walk? When inflation full town, put empty pot for fire, and mama bomb boy, they shoot him out like firing squad. Sick of Konga and Bedu, we hungry play for Bele. Grandma no walk, my brother. Now pigeon time be that. He taking switch for hand, fling him for his shoulder, put strong snuff for nose. They can clear your head. Bo, grandma know they walk. When more day for half moon, and belay they crawl for ground. When hungry be, Samanja for inside man picking. Grandma know they walk. When Koboko they holler for a big man in body. See Mambo for checkpoint. Breakdowns for main road. You go put grandma for reverse. Now pigeon time be that. What got you into the 
into this weird and wonderful world of poetry? <laughs> Uh, my my school teacher first. Uh, her name is Emily Duncan. She she taught us literature, and I was very taken by the way she would interpret the style, the mind of the poet, and um, and um, I just I just found it interesting that I could write my thoughts, and I found that I have so many, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I started writing, but. Um, my parents would try to, to dissuade me, like, what are you writing? Why are they always so dark? Why don't you have any happy memories, you know, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's, 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 that's really where it started and I haven't stopped writing. You know, I've been thinking about Nigeria recently. All of the things that have been happening, you know, the... It's not just about the plane crash. It's about how we are, how we've become, where we're coming from, where we're going, you know. I. I looked at the newspapers recently and saw that people's houses were getting repossessed, people that we thought were actually wealthy. I sat down with my friends, you know, and we were in a group of five, and I found out in the conversation that four of us were divorced by 35. And I started wondering about where we're going in this country. And then the plane crashed, you see, but before the plane crashed, a week before on Sunday, my aunt died, and she died because she was diagnosed for malaria and typhoid when she actually had pancreatic cancer. So she could have lived. And then the next Tuesday, my hairstylist died because there was no light and she needed to put on the generator and there was an explosion and she burnt to death. Fire service question, if there was light, would there be a need for us to be dealing with petrol and things that are better left at stations, managed and supervised? And while I was coping with that, then on Sunday I heard that the plane crashed and four of my friends died in it. One of them has her wedding dress hanging in her bedroom, you see, because in two months she was to be married and we thanked God just because someone failed to do their bit, someone failed to say this plane cannot fly. And it made me wonder, you know, where are we going to in this country? And so I wrote SNP. It's about responsibility, it's about each of us, it's not just the government, it's each of us doing what we're supposed to be doing and speaking up when we're supposed to be speaking up. And just leaving something more than what we've known. I would have cut snip off all of my hair just in protest. Maybe then someone would listen to me. Perhaps I can be the sign and the symbol to this generation. Becoming the standard for something more enduring than weave on and one night stands. Surely we must be more than society has said we are. The generation of false nails and false tales of cities traveled and girls nailed snip. For every time that you decide to sleep with a man just because he holds the keys to the next car you want to be seen driving from or the next mobile phone you want to be seen calling from, snip. Why take it from behind and go anal so you can become number what on his other list of other a-holes? My brother, for every time that you've sold your conscience for a contract, knowing all the time it was not right, cutting corners and reading the reports in the papers of the number of children now dead so you could become a champagne papa snip. I refuse to be a part of a failing generation. Stand with me if you agree not to be a statistic of those that could have been but failed. Snip off all of the expectations of our fathers that we will take the bribe, cheat on our wives, expect a standard of our children while we sleep with our neighbor's son, look at our watches and smile at the memory of the one that it came from, only become known because of who our parents have once known, creating no legacy for ourselves, spending all that we have now on expensive trips and school fees, knowing that when that child is older, you may have to return the house that we now live in, snip. Stand with me, my brother, my sister, my friend, against bad marriages and non-commitment to commitment and marrying the ones that we know that we will soon resent, bringing forth children to a world of half hopes. Meet your other father, other mother, and half step brother too, confusing the generation ahead of us. Snip. Stand with me, my brother, my sister, my friend, I, and all that the Lord have given me will be the sign and the symbol to this generation and to those coming after us that we will not sell our standards for weave on and mobile phones. Snip.
that will not ask our children to be responsible while worms eat their way through our lying foundation snip that will try our damnedest to be true to the ones to whom we say I do and by God build a home with children less confused snip of the hair, the numbered shirts, the new vehicles with sharpish names, the unnecessarily expensive trips on airplanes, the house that we have bought on hire, purchased, the land with fraudulent papers by which we pose, the contract with half the pay greasing fat palms, the office table on which you were screwed and laid bare just so you could report that you brought a bank account here, just snip. I will go bareheaded in protest, snip. I will go to the market and I will bargain the hardest, save my own money and hold on to integrity, snip. Give hope to the generations ahead of me that it's okay not to belong for today. Plan for tomorrow so your true wealth will come and stay, snip. If it puts you under pressure that's taking you nowhere, here are my scissors, my brother, my sister, my friend. Let society know that we will win in the end. But for the time being, just snip. Join me and let us be free. My name is Donna Obaseki Ogunaike, a proud Nigerian, true to be. I'm a rebel. I rise in the hevel, contradicting the devil. Soldier marching to the sound of a fiddle. Saddled with a duty to save civilization's cradle. Enabled to bleed those who feed on blood, taste and spittle. The odds dribble, we are hallowed rather than hallowed. Targeted to be gallowed, balloted to be guillotined, there seems to be certainty for devils in certain fat and high falutin fallacies, bloody Pharisees, Sadducees, glad to fleas, sheep, shit is steep, truth is deep, lies creep while men flip, lips strip poison, souls clip reason, and only a rebel will win. It's a rebellion led by the line of Zion, Siren Science, to carry on the course as attaining who is souls. I breathe up my breath and hold out on death because there is a rebellion brewing while government is screwing up the polity, screwing with daughters and sons, with whips, feathers and guns. While we chatter puns, they shut up with guns. When the clutter is done, for them it's fun, when blood bloods the sun and true soldiers run. Poets can prophesy, and real prophets are drunk and wine and rum. The sage has son, he has some wisdom, but yet rebellion brews, while trouble stews. Why do the puppet lie? Listen to the poetry, the poor try, and the poor cry is do or die. Face life like a boat, first a tide high, but we hide our hides, scared to fight. We slide in the night, waiting for the day to light the way, the day to shine and light the way we feel to listen, so we have not to say. Nay, the poets say, pay me justice, pay me pride. Pay me for the ride, cause I already died. The fight, death, put aside breath, I abide. I ride, earth, terrified, dignified, dignified. Cause your politics can touch my poetics. You've got devil tricks, but they not infinite. What is this? What is, is. But it's not the end. And it's not the end. It's not the end. The end. The end the end. So Sage, what got you into poetry? Okay, in my case, I started telling stories from when I was like six or seven or eight about that time. And I then started penning my stories when I was 13. Mm -hmm. You know, by the time I was 16, I was writing for, I was contributing for a newspaper and writing songs. Okay. You know, but I had so much stuff I wanted to do. I was trying to act, trying to sing, trying to write. There was so much stuff. And one time I came across a poet called Muta Baruka when I was 14 mm -hmm. in in Jaws at um, Regis and Splash. I was watching him on TV and what he was doing, I felt I wanted to do it. So as soon as he, he was done, I started writing that kind of poetry, dog poetry, you know, and that's how I started. And here I am. Okay. You know. Wonderful. I mean, okay. So now I think you've touched a little bit on the varying lives <laughs> of a poet <laughs> or the changing lives of a yeah. poet. And I think uh, that's something that I really want to find out. Can you make a living just being a poet? And has anyone found a way? My uncle did not believe it was possible for a poet to earn a living in a country like Nigeria. Mm. I also did not think about it. It didn't matter to me whether I earned a living or not. I just wanted to be a poet. Mm -hmm. And once I made up my mind, and from the age of 12, I knew I would be a poet if I did nothing else in the world. Mm. By the time I, I, I walked my way out of university and had written so many poems, I mean, it, it was clear to me that at some point in my life, there will be a way of making poetry pay. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I started writing publishable, publishable poetry at about the age of 17, 18. I mean, many of the poems in the poet, poet Light were written at that time. But it was when I started reading to large crowds in London, in Colombia, in Venezuela, and places outside Nigeria mm -hmm. that it hit me. It was actually possible to earn a living as a poet. I have survived doing poetry six years. I've done 300 shows or more. I've done 100 paying shows. You know, I've done really, really large events. The, uh, some of the biggest events from Big Brother Africa, Big Brother Nigeria to award shows, to really large concerts, to some of the comedy shows. I've done mm. poetry everywhere. I create a poem that suits a particular audience mm. and I have done poetry everywhere. And I've survived making money off it. Slanka Nicodemus of the Kanka one. Oro, hot like ice. My drink is the drink that binds one man with nine. Nine in 99 are lightness, waiting for lateness, where outcast natives lurk in Judas. If worry comes with a beatbox, the violence kills me. My life is like a fage bucket, skidding to keep bucket. My locket stays strong around my neck. But when a boy is with the vex, them no get light to eye on them shirts. They cease them say they never pay them tax. So this morning, them take out last day, scratch them back. And then they laugh when they say Ninja too corrupt. Oh boy, then snatch my wallet for Israel. And since then, I know say everywhere I get them stress. I go ja if I see police for night, man. If he be saying a guy's way, no, they like lights. And now side Nash is his canines. Does a drawbridge man function in the court? The echoes of my doggos reach me. Them say boys too many way, no get dog. That's why my mind's going local. That's why my mind's going local. That's why my mind's going local. Igbe who comes with a feast full of dynamite, with an iron mic, the creeks burn all night, parents in flight, there was males, whalers, kidnappings, gone clapping, the Delta youth still locking. Sixteen when I shot a slog through a strange face. A man falls like a long dazed. Tick tock when the clock. I fled the spot. My warlock flee flop like a peacock's mohawk. Now I pledge to leave long, never again, frying against God and country. Yeah, I pray the Lord give me my amnesty through the cast of the lead dynasty. If worry he comes like a beast in the weed. I'm to the teeth with treaties and graffitis. It's not easy. African cities are covered in smoke and misery. Back from a concert in the Fiji's, picked up in the blue bands by Johnny Mendes. He said, son, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. This mind's going local. This mind's going local. And so ideally, Ideally, I carry on the relationship with my bunk. I carry on the relationship with my bunk. I drag all day long singing song. The system dies in the hands of men long since enslaved. Somebody better dig up a grave. Poetry for me, most importantly, has to do with the mysteriousness and the mystery of it. That's why I got into poetry in the first place. And to capture mystery, Yes, you need modern scientific methods. Photography, film, um, written works, prints, media, and all of that. When you talk about African poetry, I think it's the mystery, the system, hmm. the style, the rendition. Where did poetry originate from in Nigeria? Every human society was always a society of poets. It, what mattered 
to very many people was that particular individuals perfected the art and became recognized for it. We are all poets when we use language. But for instance, in our various communities, there are poems for hunters, poems by people who trade, poems in individual families. That is to say, the orikis of very many families in Yoruba land is replicated in virtually all the cultures of Nigeria. You have, I mean, the Yorubas have systematized it in terms of the orikis in Jala, that's, and, and, and Ewi. In the case of Ewi, for instance, I, I, I always like people to remember that it is called Kewi. You actually shout it. It is public poetry. And we need to make a, a, a special deal, taking poetry as a private thing into the public, uh, public sphere. It is when you take it to this public sphere that the Ewi becomes something that all Nigerians share. You find it in every locality across Nigeria. What I'm saying when I say bridge the gap is that we need to move that indigenous, the indigenous form and the anglicized one into a public space where they can interact and help ginger a new sensibility. Where can we go to find this mystery, this magic of the written word? It is important that we manage to pull the resources so that you don't have to go to a university library to get them. Incidentally, many universities do not have proper collections of Nigerian poetry because the publishing industry is no longer what it used to be. With self-publishing, you have so much in terms of published poetry that very few people know about. We need to have performances worked into institutions. And in fact, when you are talking about having a company or something of that nature, it should accommodate, for instance, performer spaces so that you are sure that when people go to that place, the, the poets who read there will be paid for what they do. Can poetry cut across social strata? Does it make an impact in society? And can it really make a difference to the common man? I remember the first major event I had, I went for the rehearsal. When I was coming for the event, it was Hip Hop All Awards 2006. I was going for the main show. And some area boy came to meet me outside. And he said, I saw you yesterday. That thing, you do, that thing you're doing, you think we don't know it? We know it, let me tell you. That's what he said to me. Then I did something for a TV uh, station as well. And I, was, I went to some house and a mechanic, I heard him just saying my words back to me. And I was wondering, what is he doing? He wasn't saying the words exactly, but I just noticed this guy saying some words to me. And what, what, what is he saying? Poetry is a powerful tool and it cuts across. Poetry necessarily makes a difference because as a performance, it symbols, it changes the way we look at the world. And anything that can change the way we look at the world makes things happen. It is not just a question of uh, people enjoying the reading. People also want to know what you are saying, how it hit home to the issues that trouble them in their lives. I would always continue to write my political poetry because I know that it helps people recondition their own ways of looking at life in society. I'm not even just talking about change from the political angle. I'm talking about personal responsibility. I'm talking about individuals making that difference, right? Because if each one changes, then the ripple will go to the government or what we call the government, what we call corruption, which is just all of us, you know? So I can see it making a difference and I can, I can see it, I can see it transforming lives if more of us open our mouths and speak up. Mm -hmm.